Chapter 5, Colonies No More. Great Britain ruled the 13 colonies along the eastern coast of North America by 1763. They gained new colonies through conquest and trade with other colonial powers such as Spain and the Netherlands. The colonies stretched from present-day Maine to Georgia. Great Britain also had colonies in the Caribbean. By 1775, the colonists were more than 2 million strong. They had thrived while Native Americans had been killed off by war and disease. The impacts on Native American populations. Of the approximately 12 million Native Americans who inhabited North America in 1500, only 600,000 remain by the year 1800. That means more than 90% of the Native population died due to epidemic, epidemic diseases such as smallpox and because of warfare with the European settlers. Diseases such as measles, influenza, cholera, and scar scarlet fever wiped out entire groups. Native populations had no defense against the entirely unfamiliar European diseases. Many Native American children starved to death when many adults were too stricken by illness to provide food. So if you'll look, we'll finish reading in a second, but in the year 1500, there were 12 million Native Americans. By the year 1800, there were 600,000. And then we dropped the population to 237,000. And then we started seeing a uh, gradual increase. But even in the year 2012, it was still not the same or not as high as it was back in the 1500s for Native Americans. So during, the, during and after the colonial period, Native Americans were forced off their ancest ancestral lands into smaller and smaller reservations, while European settlers and their descendants expanded across the continent. Now we're going to get close to the Revolutionary War. So the road to the revolution. The British government paid to protect its colonies. Great Britain supplied the weapons and soldiers used to fight wars in the colonies. They helped the colonists fight against Native Americans and against other European powers such as the French. These conflicts were very expensive. The British government raised taxes on the colonists to pay for the soldiers. This angered some colonists. They felt the taxes were unfair. They wanted local leaders to decide their taxes. Leaders from the colonies met to decide what to do. At first, most colonists only wanted the right to govern themselves as part of the British Empire, but Great Britain would not give in to colonists' demands. Some colonists began dreaming of independence. The co colonial way of life was about to change forever. The Revolutionary War was about to begin. So I want to read about medicine in colonial times and why so many people did die, just like in the movie The Sign of the Beaver, um, from different diseases, maybe a lot easier than they do today. But in colonial times, people did not fully understand germs and disease. They believed the body contained different humors or fluids. When a person had an illness, it was believed these humors were unbalanced. A common cure for many illnesses was bleeding or letting out large amounts of a person's blood. People thought that this would re remove whatever was making the patient ill. So leeches were sometimes placed on a patient to suck out the blood in a process called leaching. So I don't, if you don't know what they are, they're like little uh, kind of worm looking creatures that they would put on your skin and they just suck your blood. And they thought that that would heal people, but they just didn't understand uh, sicknesses and medicine back in that time. So I'm gonna tell you a story about um, a girl named Sarah. So it's a day in the life of Sarah. Sarah is a 10 year old girl on a Pennsylvania farm in the 1700s. She shares a room with her many brothers and sisters. At 5 o'clock a.m., Sarah grabs the buckets and walks down to the creek to get fresh water. She collects twigs and sticks for the fire. Her sisters gather berries. Sarah checks for eggs. Finding none, she helps her sister make the butter. She gets blisters on her hands from working the churn. At 8 o'clock a.m., Sarah begins weaving. Today, she will learn to make a new shirt for her father. Her mother is feeding the baby. When she is finished, she will help Sarah read. At 9 o'clock a.m., the children began lessons for the day. Sarah practices writing. Mother gets the Bible. She only lets the eldest children hold it. They take turns reading. Sarah knows the most words. At 1 o'clock p.m., after dinner, Sarah goes to work on the farm. She collects carrots and lettuce as well as rosemary and rhyme, or thyme. The family will use the ingredients for supper. At 3 o'clock p.m., the children come outside to complete their chores. Some of Sarah's brothers 
butcher one of the pigs. Others go to work in the fields. Sarah must finish the weaving. At 6 o'clock p.m., the children set the table for the evening meal. Afterward, as the grown-ups talk, the girls clean up the meal and head to bed. Tomorrow, the family starts planning for the coming winter months.